Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 17th, 2022, around 11 a.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including multiple tropical cyclone threats in the East Pacific and a look at how dangerous the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season could be for the United States. Could it be a disastrous season? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Jumping straight into everything, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon. It is pretty quiet in the Atlantic Basin for now. We do have a complex of shower and thunderstorm activity over Florida right now, really over the east coast of Florida. This is not really expected to develop into much as it's going to encounter pretty unfavorable conditions and there's just not really a lot of upper level support with this system as well. And then in the deep tropics here, we are pretty quiet as we would expect for the month of July. And then we can see here that there is no tropical cyclone formation in the Atlantic Basin over the next couple of days. But in the East Pacific Basin, we do have another hurricane. This is Hurricane Estelle. This is a Category 1 located at 15.5 north and 106.6 degrees west. If you look here on the visible satellite imagery, we notice that the storm today is looking pretty well organized. Again, we can kind of zoom in here and see what's going on. We do have a little bit of shear impacting the way that these convective towers are blowing up. We noticed that it's not able to fully wrap around here. Uh, but other way, we really do have a pretty good central dense overcast. We look at the actual forecast here from the National Hurricane Center. This is expected to become a Category 3 hurricane as it moves off towards the west here. You can see it's Category 1 right now, expected to be a Category 2 sometime by later today. This is about tonight here, about 8 p.m. Eastern. And this will become a Category 3 tomorrow and then move off into the cooler waters where it will eventually dissipate and not impact land whatsoever. So that is certainly some good news there. So in the Atlantic Basin, we do expect things to ramp up and a large part of the threat areas this year will be in response because of this upper level ridge to the north over kind of the North Atlantic. The ridge over troubled waters is something that we've been talking about for the last couple of months and it is starting to come to fruition because we're seeing signs that this blocking pattern will maintain itself and there is some ambiguities within that. There is the potential that we could have some upper level troughing that temporarily breaks down this ridge but either way it seems like this ridge across the north is here to stay and that is going to send these hurricanes that eventually do develop, it will be sending them westward where people live. And that is certainly some news that we don't necessarily want to hear, but it is certainly something that needs to be talked about. So what are the threat areas for this year? Well, generally speaking, there is a pretty substantial risk, especially in the Caribbean uh, this year. There is a very high risk, pretty much an extreme risk, of seeing some type of tropical activity within the Caribbean this year. Whether that be a major hurricane or tropical storm impacts, there is a very high risk of that happening this year in the Caribbean. Given all the steering patterns, it certainly looks like everything is pretty much set up for that. And then that kind of continues then into the Gulf of Mexico where there is a high risk. So pretty much about you know 75 to 80% odds of seeing tropical cyclone impacts within a given area in the circle here. So that includes pretty much the entire Gulf Coast here from Texas all the way to Florida. There is a high risk of seeing impacts this year. And then the United States here, especially along the East Coast, uh, including portions of New York, uh, all the way down to South Carolina and the East Coast of Florida, it seems like that there is a moderate impact risk this year. Now, moderate being around about 40 to about 50% odds of seeing some type of tropical cyclone impacts. Again, you know, give or take, but it definitely seems like especially the most impacts could be around the Carolinas this year. So there is a moderate risk of impacts across those areas this year because of that upper level high that will be steering storms generally westward. Uh, and again, surrounding this you know, moderate risk, there is a low risk, especially across portions of Maine and then into the Canadian Maritimes over here. So there is a low risk for develop, or, you know, for any impacts there. But generally speaking, the two greatest areas of concern would be the Caribbean 
and the Gulf of Mexico for some significant impacts from tropical cyclones this year. But what about Florida? Well, Florida has kind of been spared the last couple of years uh, from about 2019 onwards. We've kind of been spared for the most part. Um, but this is the hurricane impact risk for 2022 in the state of Florida. We noticed that there are two discernible high risk areas. There is a high risk area up across the panhandle, and this would coincide with more northward moving tropical cyclones in the Gulf of Mexico. And then the Florida West Coast here, there is a high risk of seeing tropical cyclone impacts from about the Tampa Bay area down to Cape Coral and a moderate risk surrounding that. Now, for the peninsula and for portions of South Florida, South Florida, there is a low to moderate risk here. Again, including portions of North Florida, there is a low risk. We don't really see many significant impacts to portions of North Florida. Uh, really, the last one to occur was Irma in 2017 with the track that kind of came up the state like that. Uh, but those significant impacts will not really be prevalent this year, I believe. And then there's that moderate risk zone, again, from any East Coast systems that managed to kind of squeeze by Florida and turn its way out towards the Carolinas. There's a moderate risk from about uh, Miami-Dade County northward, uh, following the immediate coastline here into far portions of eastern Orange County and the, you know, portions then of Daytona and Bavard County, including Melbourne. So there is some risk areas there for tropical cyclone impact. So when could we expect to see the season ramp up? Well, this is the GFS Ensemble forecast. This is a much longer range forecast we're going to be looking at here, but this is the 0Z run uh, from the 16th of July, so from yesterday's forecast here. Now, we'll kind of move this out in time. Again, no activity is expected over the next couple of days, but look what starts to happen here as we get beyond uh, the 384-hour time range. Again, this is really out in the voodoo land, but it kind of gives some... Uh, indications that we could be seeing lower pressures here sometime by mid-August in the deep tropics in the Caribbean. And this would pretty much coincide with, again, these threat areas that we were just talking about. So these, these threat areas uh, do match up very well within the models and some of the climate forecasting. Uh, now, again, any specific target impacts, I'm not going to even worry about that because it's so voodoo land that, you know, this may not even happen and you cannot predict storms you know, really any more than about five to seven days out. Uh, but generally speaking, it looks like that we will be experiencing lower than average pressures if we actually look at the MSLP anomalies at this time. The MSLP anomalies generally trend to be lower than average, lower than average heights across most of the deep tropics and the Caribbean at this time. Uh, but there is a little bit of a problem here within the GFS forecast. If we actually uh, look here at what's kind of to be expected right now, We'll take a look at that graphic here in a second. Uh, but what we kind of notice is that we generally have this pattern where there's a lot of upward moving air over really the, the East Pacific Basin, and then there's sinking suppressed air over the West Pacific. Now, all this upward moving air over the East Pacific is generating tropical cyclones uh, in the East Pacific Basin. And so far, we've had these tropical waves that are moving westward across the tropical Atlantic they cross over into the Pacific and then they develop. And then that resulting shear actually translates into the Atlantic Basin where we end up having just this immense amount of shear in the Caribbean and the tropical Atlantic because of the resulting tropical cyclone activity. So that's really why we haven't seen much in the way of development in the Atlantic, um, along with the unfavorable background state and the fact that it's only July 17th, this is not August 17th, but generally speaking, if this pattern were to verify, you would get this result where most of our tropical cyclones end up actually in the East Pacific Basin instead of the Atlantic. The problem, though, with this is that the GFS has kind of had a notorious um, you know, bias, basically, for trying to keep a rising branch of velocity over the entire Pacific. So basically, it's been trying to keep upward moving air over the Pacific and that's just not the reality. We have definitely had upward moving air over the Pacific, obviously, but that's not going to stay around through mid to late August. And so I believe that we're going to see more of an African standing wave set up over the, you know, Africa and the Indian Ocean. That would go to support pretty much enhanced tropical cyclone activity 
And I, I do believe that is something that is going to happen. If you actually look here at the European ensembles here, the 200 millibar wind, so wind patterns at about 39,000 feet in the atmosphere, we notice that generally speaking, we actually do have a pretty good favorable period that will be coming up later in, in the time frame. We notice that by the end of the 360 hour period, period really on the uh, European ensembles, we have generally unanimous easterly winds in the upper levels across the entire deep tropics and then continuing into the Caribbean as well. So there definitely seems to be a period of favorable conditions that will be setting up from about late July uh, into August. I believe we're going to start to see the, the you know models begin to flip around to show more development. If you actually look at the European uh, forecast and we look at that 850 millibar vorticity, We'll go out to the zero Z run. We notice actually we do have some amplified tropical waves and almost this monsoon trough that begins to set up across the deep tropics. This definitely would go to favor the increased potential for warming across the deep tropics and the potential for these systems to kind of break off and form into individual tropical cyclones. So we'll have to see kind of how that plays out with time. But again, generally speaking, we'll be seeing this ridge of high pressure set up. And this is the risk area for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Again, if you are in any of these risk areas that are highlighted, make sure you take precautions to stay prepared and aware of any tropical cyclone activity heading your way. All right. So that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I will talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.